Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip? Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, Magic players. This is Jumbo Commander, and today's video is about main boarding for your meta. Commander is a 100 card singleton format, and you might not have the benefit of a sideboard like other formats, but you can always bring those hate cards in if it matches your meta. So let's go over a few problems that could be going on in your meta, kinds of decks and strategies that you might be losing to, and find out some hate cards to answer them. The first thing I want to talk about is traditional color hate. These are cards like Choke, Flash Fires, Acid Rain. A lot of them will affect the mana base, Boil. And there's so many interesting cards that could destroy just one player at the table. A lot of the old hate cards seem to go after lands. And I really don't want to get into, well, do we attack lands or don't we? Uh, ramping is a very viable and powerful strategy in our format, and people don't go after lands, we don't punish ramping, and uh, that's kind of left up to your own playgroup. So I'm going to throw out some of these hate cards, and they might fit into your playgroup, they might not. I know that if I brought any of these hate cards in, yeah, someone would hate me a lot. <laughs> I don't think it would be very well received. Let's go into some hate cards that are a little bit more interesting. Dystopia. This one I love. Cumulative upkeep, pay one life. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a white or green permanent. This is spectacular color hate. I love it. Omen of fire, return all islands to their owner's hands. Ugh. Each player sacrifices a plains or white permanent for each white permanent he or she controls. Just anarchy, destroy all white permanents. These are some interesting hate cards, more than just destroying lands. There's some black cards that also mess with your mana base pretty badly. Infernal Darkness and Contamination. They basically shut off your opponents from anything but black mana. Very, very disruptive and not very nice at all. And then that brings us to Blood Moon, which shuts off all non-basic lands. And if I'm going to mention that, I got to mention Magus of the Moon, maybe even Wave of Vitriol. I might even mention Iona, which shuts off a particular color. Now you might be watching this two minutes of video and think, oh my gosh, this is way out of control. This is super serious. I don't really want this kind of strategy to deal with my opponents. And you might be right. This might be a little bit too much hate for many players. And I don't like the idea of attacking land bases that much. It kind of shuts down the fun. Also, if you're across the commander table from me and you blow up all the non-basic lands, well, you've probably destroyed my five color budget mana base. And yeah, I might have been a little bit too greedy, but I'm usually not playing the most powerful of decks. See, I feel like sometimes the hate doesn't match the deck that they're playing against. That's why my first word of caution is use your hate wisely. Seek out little things that can help keep your opponent's strategy in check, but not oppressively dismantle their cool and interesting deck. So I don't want to leave this mana hate category unfinished. It seems like there isn't a good answer in this category, but there is, and it's one of my favorite cards, Carpet of Flowers. Not only is it art done by Rebecca Gay, it's one green mana. During your main phase, you may add X mana of one color to your mana pool where X is the number of islands target opponent controls. Have you recently played a game of Commander where your opponents haven't owned islands? Usually there's one or two out on the battlefield. If there's two on the battlefield, then this is a colored soul ring every single turn. That's amazing. And a lot of times there's more islands out on the battlefield. Islands are everywhere. Carpet of Flowers could be a beautiful inclusion to your green deck. It is heavily played in competitive EDH. I honestly think that this should enter into way more commander decks. It's ramp and fixing, and it goes after those islands in a much better way than choke or boil. Okay, moving on. What do we do if our opponents just keep drawing cards? We're buried in card advantage. 
where they might be running cards like the Locust God as their commander or Nekusar or just have a bunch of consecrated sphinxes in their deck that you can't afford, well, let's shut down their card draw with Spirit of the Labyrinth, Alms Collector, and Notion Thief. Notion Thief is particularly nasty. All of these will prevent card draw, and I love these cards in white. White has a horrible time at drawing cards, so you can just play this hate bear and shut down your opponents while you are happy with your one card a turn. We used to have another fellow in this category, Leovold was banned, and so I'm sorry Leovold, you don't get to shut down card draw like you used to. The next strategy that is very popular is graveyard strategies. Using the graveyard as another resource. And man, it gets nasty, especially when people are playing tuned Carador decks or Mirin decks. They can get so much value straight out of the graveyard. So why not throw in a Relic of Progenitus or a Rest in Peace? Relic of Progenitus is really solid because you can just cycle it. <laughs> That's it, you can just cycle it. It can even be fetched up by a Trinket Mage. And Rest in Peace is a little bit more universal. It exiles the graveyards when it enters the battlefield, but also doesn't let new cards enter into the graveyard. That's a static effect, which is really cool. And that means it works with Helm of Obedience, so you can kill your opponents with this two-card combo as you're disrupting them. Rest in Peace is a devoted hate card, though. It's nice to have the outlet of a win condition with Helm of Obedience, but it really does take up a card slot. Some cards that have a really low impact would be cards like Relic of Progenitus that cycles, but also lands like Bajookabog and Scavenger Grounds. These can just sit in your commander deck, and if you need to have graveyard hate, bam, you got the lands right there. Next strategy that could be dangerous in your meta is Mass Token. If people go super wide, particularly on big, big turns. I've seen this most often with Omnath, Locus of Rage, Titania, Protector of Argoth, just having these huge turns where they just flood the board with these tokens. And even though this works particularly well against tokens, it can also work against other creature strategies, like Marin that pulls creatures out of the graveyard over and over again, or Gishath that will flood the board with dinosaurs. My first suggestion against creature strategies isn't really hate or really fit into this video, it's just run board wipes. I mean, that's pretty universal. You should have board wipes in your deck already. Creature strategies are super popular, so answering them preemptively in your deck is important. But maybe a card like Massacre Worm could be a really valuable include, especially against that Darien King of Keldor or other small token strategies. But for the big tokens like Omnath and Titania, you might need different strategies. Just wipe the board or stall them for a little bit. That's why cards like Blind Obedience and Thalia are so popular. Many token or creature strategies want to flood the board and attack with haste. They don't want to give each opponent a chance to interact with their creatures. So if you can interrupt the creatures before they attack you, you got some more time. There are so many different ways to interact with creature combat because that's a lot of what magic is. I'm just going to throw a few out there like propaganda, taxing your opponent for the number of creatures attacking you. Glacial Chasm can give you a much needed breather against creature combat. If you have a big creature, Ensnaring Bridge can keep them from attacking you. If you're worried about ground creatures, Moat can protect you, but... It costs all of the money. Uh, same thing with a card like Force Field. It can protect you from some big creatures. But let's stop talking about million dollar cards. How about Sandworm Convergence? Just pennies for this awesome card that can definitely protect you and create a win condition. Or Miri from the new commander set can prevent opponents from really attacking you very easily. There are too many cards to go into detail in this area of the strategy, but what I really want to talk about is interrupting this sort of mass token creation. And that's in cards like Hollowed Moonlight, Containment Priest, and Gather Specimens. These are the kinds of cards that can really interrupt the whole strategy, where you're dealing with the actual mechanic of putting the creature into play rather than dealing with the creatures that are already there. Containment Priest is particularly powerful. If a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. So Containment Priest does not deal with the token producers, but this just shuts down commanders like Mirin and Jisath and Alicia and Marchesa and Brago and Kalia, and honestly the list just goes on. 
Hollowed Moonlight does hit those token producers, and its floor is really solid because you can just cycle it for two and draw your card. I particularly like Gather Specimens because of the adorable creepy owl on the art. And also, you can steal all of those tokens if your opponent goes for a massive play. I've seen Titania players sacrifice their entire mana base to get a bunch of 5-3s, and I have not yet gather specimens to all of those elementals, but I really, really want to. Okay, the next strategy has got to just be value. It's all about these incremental advantages, and the problem with this is that if they play a Cloud Blazer, you might have the board wipe or the removal spell, but they've already gained their life and drew their cards. So what do you do when you're fighting against value? You often see this in Enter the Battlefield generals like Brago or Marcel, where basically it's all about activated abilities. And so creatures gain incremental value turn after turn after turn. A great way to interrupt this is just with a Torpor Orb. Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. This can be particularly bad against many decks. I have a lot of decks that just rely on value creatures, and I need to have an answer for Torpor Orb, and it's lazy of me to have my answer be Acidic Slime and Reclamation Sage. Those don't work, by the way. You can also include Hushwing Griff and the brand new Tokotli Honor Guard. So if we have those enter the battlefield triggers under control, let's deal with those activated abilities. Linvala Keeper of Silence can shut those down and Phyrexian Revoker is very versatile because you can always name a card and shut down those activated abilities. If you want to go a little bit simpler, you can throw in a Pithy Needle and a Trinket Mage to fetch it up. There's also a lot of artifacts that might need shutting down. I particularly like Null Rod and Stony Silence. They're great at just messing with all the artifacts. I like these ones a lot because they mess with mana rocks too. Mana rocks can be a particularly strong strategy, and so messing with them with this hate can be really powerful. I also like Kataki Wars Wage because it limits how crazy mana rocks can get, but if you have a card that you really, really like, like a Panharmonicon and it's cool in your deck, you can just pay that one and keep it around. I just don't want you going crazy with every single signet in your deck. The next strategy drives me crazy, so I often have answers to Hexproof. Oh, I. I hate it that I can't interact with your creature. It drives me crazy. A Sigarda host of Herons or a Ural the Mist Stalker that's all suited up, and I feel like I can't answer it? Ugh. I also hate Narset, but if I'm disciplined in my deck building, I'll be able to answer these threats. I actually found a really good new card for this, Settle the Wreckage. You exile all attacking creature target player controls. Because you're targeting the player, you just get those creatures no matter how hexproof or indestructible or whatever they are. I've also used Angel of the Dire Hour in the past. It's just so expensive. Seven mana for a flashing 5-4, but it does exile all attacking creatures, and this doesn't even need you to target your opponent. Another way to get around hexproof is to get rid of it with cards like Archetype of Endurance or Arcane Lighthouse. You can also get around it with Edict Effects. I've included Crackling Doom in here because it particularly goes after these go-high strategies of Sigarda and Ural because it always gets the greatest power among creatures he or she controls, and that way a dinky little creature lying around doesn't eat your Edict Effect. I also like Council's Judgment because it's a cool political card and it also gets around Hexproof. Next up, we have a strategy that causes a lot of frustration with a lot of people, and that's mass counterspells. Ugh, this is going on in my meta and people are upset about it. Well, let's get some answers going on so you can fight against those counterspells. I really like creatures that impact your opponent's ability to play on your turn. Dragonlord Dromoka and Teferi keep them all casting spells at other times. Going one step further, City of Solitude and Grand Abolisher don't let them cast spells during your turn and also use activated abilities, which is pretty cool as well. This means that you will not be interrupted when you're trying to do your thing. Another way to fight counterspells is through lands like Cavern of Souls and Beseju Who Shelters All. 
But you know we can also fight fire with fire. So we can fight counter spells with our own counter spells. I like Dispel, counter target instant spell. Almost everything that can interact with your spells has to be at instant speed, so Dispel hits most of those. Swan Song is very versatile. Target enchantment, instant, or sorcery. Yeah, they get a bird, but trust me, Swan Song is majestic. Also, I'm a big fan of Delay. It costs one more mana, but it's very cool to be able to suspend their counterspell, and then when it finally goes off, it just gets pointed at nothing. And in a pinch, you can just delay a big threat. I particularly like it because you're not countering it, you're just saying, let's, ho let's hold on a minute, okay? But my last piece of tech for this category really does have you playing your metagame, and that's Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blast. If you're worried about counterspells or you're often playing against blue decks, these are so critical for fighting against the blue menace that's everywhere. These will protect your spells from being countered. They can take out blue permanents. They're so strong. I also want to throw in Guttural Response. Counter target blue instant spell seems pretty narrow, but when you think about protecting from counter spells, even countering a cyclonic rift, huh? You need these kinds of cards to combat the blue players that might have more powerful strategies than you. So don't be afraid to run these cards because they really will be good in most situations. The last category that everyone tries to fight against is combo. What happens if you're playing in a combo heavy meta? How do you adapt to it? How do you main board against those combo players? Well, some generals that I was considering is Yidris and Maelstrom Wanderer because I'm going to talk about one strategy that particularly interrupts Cascade, but also Mizzix or other spell slinger strategies. So the first thing I want to talk about is Rule of Law, Arcane Laboratory, and Eidolon of Rhetoric. All of these will limit people to one spell a turn, which doesn't seem so bad unless you're a combo player and then it's a nightmare. These are also the cards I wanted to mention that shuts down Yidris and Maelstrom Wanderer because their cascade doesn't work anymore. <laughs> it's awesome. They cast their Maelstrom Wanderer and then they go to Cascade Cascade and they're like, no, no one spell per turn. Oh, it's so great. So if you have a Maelstrom Wanderer person in your meta and they just have Maelstrom Wanderer and then just tons of powerful seven drops to cascade into, you just land one of these spells and suddenly they're going to be stuck with so many clunky cards in their deck. You're going to pick them apart. These are also a nightmare for combo players because you need to be able to cast multiple spells a turn so you can get your combo pieces all lined up and together. Now, if you also know what your opponent's combo pieces are, you can go after them directly. A card like Nevermore can shut down what you need to answer. And Sadistic Sacrament is one of my favorite cards. Black, 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 kicker seven. So for 10 mana, you can go into your opponent's deck and exile 15 cards. They will never combo off at all. Like, it'll be impossible. Granted, 10 mana is also impossible. They don't combo off before you get to 10 mana. They deserve to be sadistic sacramented. But if you just cast this for black, 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 go and get three cards. Oftentimes you can interrupt their combo and basically assure yourself a victory. You know, your opponents often need to go get their combo, so if you can prevent them from searching their deck with cards like Leon and Arbiter or Avon Mind Sensor, that can be particularly good as well. These cards also used to be way more expensive. Leon and Arbiter just got a reprint in Commander 2017 and is under $2. Even Mind Sensor got a reprint in Amon Ket, and it used to be just from Future Sight, and now it's under a dollar? It used to be like always at 10 or 12. So these are really powerful cards that are used in a lot of different strategies, and I really think you should pick a few of them up and play them. It's also nice to be able to interrupt your opponent's fetch lands, especially if you don't have a lot of fetch lands. Another way to keep your opponents out of their library is a card like Stranglehold. Your opponents can't search libraries, and also, they can't take extra turns either. 
That's another thing that combo players or some people might complain about, so I'd throw in Stranglehold. I also want to mention Ward of Bones. It feels a little bit like Nevermore or shutting down the game, and maybe like Rule of Law. But anyways, Ward of Bones is six mana. Each opponent who controls more creatures than you can't play creature cards. The same is true for artifacts, enchantments, and lands. This puts a huge restriction on the game, preventing a lot of people from playing their cards. I love it. Whenever you can limit what combo players play, you really shut them down. I hope you all enjoyed looking at some of my favorite answers for problems that could be going on in your metagame. This video has been brought to you by my brand new Patreon. I've been putting out a lot of videos this week in celebration doo -doo -doo -doo, of Patreon. And to thank my already dozens of patrons, I've decided to give away some cards from this video. I'm gonna give away my favorite card from each color in this video. I gotta start off with my favorite card being Carpet of Flowers. So powerful, so awesome, amazing art, number one card in this set. My next two favorites is Spirit of the Labyrinth and Ward of Bones. I love the way Ward of Bones just shuts down the game. Spirit of the Labyrinth goes in all of my white decks because honestly, if I have a hard time drawing cards, you are too. My next favorite card has got to be Swan Song. It's so versatile. I play it in almost every blue deck and the swan is gorgeous on this art. I love it. Next up, we have Pyroblast. Just belongs in every red deck and I'm going to give it away so that I can convince you to play it too. And one of the most fun cards, Sadistic Sacrament. If you ever go and just pluck 15 cards out of someone's deck. It's a magical experience and I really want you to go through and destroy your opponent with this card. So if you want to be a patron and have a chance at winning cool giveaways like this, go ahead and check me out. I'll have a link in the description. But most importantly, thank you for supporting me right now by just watching this video, by subscribing, by liking, by leaving a comment, by really just enjoying Commander and being great to each other. All right, everyone, I'll see you for more videos really soon. Bye-bye.